This is Twit. It's so funny. We're not even through releasing M3 products. And now all the rumors are going crazy about M4. Maybe we'll even see M4 at WWDC because no. this is this is the the AI flavored Apple silicon. No, yeah. no, no. I don't think that's true. I mean, Mark Irwin has a great report. I I, I agree with you. There's the whole like M3, welcome, get out. <laughs> right, this <laughs> yeah. is happening now because it's like it was just, but it was just here, and now you're talking M4, but. I think people are running away from uh, with themselves when they're like, oh, maybe it'll be a WWDC. I think Mark Gurman's report is pretty clear. It's going to happen toward the end of the year. It's going to be a one-year cycle, so it'll come in October or November-ish, just like the M3 did. And as for the report about AI, I want to just caution people. Mark Gurman's sources are amazing. He is the best scoop reporter working today and has been really for almost a decade, I would say now, from back when he was in college. Yeah, However... There's also storytelling happening here. And when he talks about AI and he talks about how Apple's hoping to revive flag flagging Mac sales, that's narrative building. That's storytelling. He doesn't report that Apple is adding souped up AI features to the chips. He just says Apple is, by the way, adding AI features at WWDC. I, I, I think if this chip had like a whole brand new neural engine or many, many, many more neural engine cores and was like completely redesigned because they realized they needed to do more AI in their chips. I think he would have reported it. The fact is a Apple's been doing AI capability in their chips for ages yeah. now. And so the, the story is just, he's trying to say, hey, put it in the larger context of, hey, you know, this summer Apple is also going to talk about AI software and these chips will be powerful, but there's, there's no, this is not like a magic a uh, chip full of AI juice. It's just an M4 and, and Apple's already, trust me, machine learning hardware is not Apple's problem. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and also like we're asked when Google announces, Hey, we've got this new tensor ch tensor AI chip that we're putting on all our phones. That's the result of them working on AI and shifting to AI for 10 years. Apple probably has not had enough runway on this idea to stay. We are building we're building silicon specifically to run our AI models and to serve the AI needs of Mac OS and iPhone OS. Not yet. So I'm, so I'm, I'm, certain, I'm certain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at, at this point, I'm sure that they're that affects the metrics that they use when they decide on performance versus power, like a power consumption, heat. When they're, if they're probably thinking that okay, we are now willing to increase the thermal envelope of our chips. We now we're now willing to have these things draw more power if it means that we can get a little, we can go from ten to eleven when we need to to run a whole bunch of stuff uh, on device because that's going to be the thing that distinguishes Apple's AI from everyone else's AI. Whereas with Google, they are very very they want to make sure you know that amongst the portfolio of models that they have they have a low power device that will be able to run excuse me a low power model that can run entirely a locally on device without connecting to a google servers or anything apple is the, is the one that's going to say we might have a model that can do some stuff in the cloud but mostly we are going to have you trust that whatever data that you're interacting with with our ai is going to be staying private to your device whether it's a mac whether it's a power mac uh, whether it's a pro mac whether it's a with it's an iphone with it's a pro iphone whatever it make I guess it makes sense to me that Apple. Okay, this is talk about storytelling, Jason. This is what the story I told myself. A prophecy oh. tells us the story <laughs> of. The well, th what I'm thinking is, uh, we saw this with the M3. As much as we expected, even on a new, uh, what was it, th three nanometer node, uh, we didn't see the biggest performance jumps that maybe I thought I was going to see. Others thought. And maybe Apple is now to the point with their chips of uh, its flavors, not performance that they're going to start looking at. Is that we definitely saw that with the M3 and you're right, right? The M3 is not like the M2 and the M1 in the sense that the, the M3 Pro chip is different from the max chip. The interconnects are different, right? Yeah, but it, it used to be a chop, basically. So there was like the pro chip and the max was just like more. And then this M3 max is different. And the M3 Pro is actually a little bit less because I think they want to make it more portable to hit a, a sweet spot kind of on the low end. Uh, not the low end of the of I guess mid range we could call it, but like you right your 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 lower end MacBook Pro, but you want a little more than the M3. It's it's it is, but it doesn't advance like the M3 Max, which really got a lot faster. So I think that I think you're right. I think Apple 
is only going to be able to make incremental updates most of the time because that's just the way it works, right? So it, every M gets whatever, 15% faster or something. But what they can also do is mix and match with their components. So like if they do a new neural engine core, which they did, I think last time, it will be a lot faster, but they can also choose how many of those cores to put on, how many GPUs to put on, how many, they've got these different processing blocks. So for example, in the pro versions of the M1, they had uh, processing blocks to do video encoding, to do, to do Apple ProRes encoding. And now, and, and they, it's in the base M2 and M3 as well. So that's their other part of this, right? Is it's not just like how fast is a core? It's like how fast are the cores? Yes. How fast are the GPU cores and the CPU cores? How fast is the neural engine? How many of each of them? What's the balance? And that does allow them to do that thing where they're like, I'll put, it's like a, a, a chef making a few different versions of the same recipe, right? I'll, I'll make this version for the download low version and this one will go to the mid range and this will go to the high end and 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 there they can experiment with those variations so the one thing where we might actually see apple's interest in ai in a future version is for example ramping up the gpus or ramping up the neural engine cores uh, but they can do that right like that's the kind of stuff where they're mixing and matching that i think and, you'll and see I, more yeah. of and i think the danger really is 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 you know confusion you know for the for the person who's, who's buying you know there starts to be like well what chip do i get you know and and you know usually it's been like oh i get the new one the new one's going to be this much faster than the old one and if it starts getting into i got to figure out which one and i i need a you know spreadsheet to figure out which one i want this is gets back into the all the trouble that apple had in the 90s um, where it wasn't simple anymore too many excuses you could you, could, yeah. you just couldn't figure out right. what you needed and how you needed it so i think that's going to be the that's what they're going that's a challenge that they're going to have to work through i also think that you know with it, with with all of the ai stuff that they're they're, they're talking about I think Apple's approach is going to be much different than everyone else's. So it'll be really interesting to see yeah. how they how they roll that out. It's probably not going to look like Chat GPT. You know, it's yeah. it, it's going to be this this probably some kind of federated solution that the most important things are to stay on your device, and then other things that are less important are probably um, sent out to the rest of the out yeah. to the, Google or somebody else. I, I I do hope that they're giving that a lot of thought, though. Remember that. Uh, I, we all love the cardinal differences in philosophy between Apple and Google, where Google can do so much more for you in certain areas because it's collecting so much information. Apple is not quite so savvy about being able to uh, divine a solution for you that works across applications and across structures, but it is keeping your privacy sacrosanct. That's again, that's the uh, cardinal uh, cardinal opinions that, that differ, but you can pick which one you get. And with AI, it might be the exact same thing, but also but, but also a bit of a problem. If Google is if, if uh, solutions from Google, OpenAI, whatever, are saying, well, no, we are putting a lot of stuff in the cloud. We are doing a lot of the processing off of your device, but that means that anytime we want, we need a gajillion cores to make this solution to make it happen fast. Anytime we want to make a solution that does not burn up your device's battery, all it needs to do is transmit something via Wi-Fi or broadband, uh, and then it will simply uh, spit out a result back. If Apple is limited to just what their own handheld CPUs can do, that's going to put them at a disadvantage for a suite of features that is, I think, is really going to speak to a lot of people. Yeah, I wanted to say something about the the confusion thing, because I think Alex is right, yeah. and we've always mentioned the four quadrants. I do think, though, that Apple has done a very good job in the Apple Silicon era, era of keeping it clear. We can all, as nerds, talk about how many CPUs, how many GPUs, all of that kind of stuff. But in the end, it's the M whatever, the <laughs> Pro, the Max, and the Ultra. And yeah. so it's one, two, three, four. It's good, better, best, and you don't, you can't afford it. And they go in very specific products, and that hasn't really changed. They 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 added a higher end skew to the Mac Mini in version two, but like the M3 goes in the MacBook Air, so will the M4 and the iMac, right? That's where it goes. The the MacBook Pro spans because there are low end ones and high end ones. Like there are the Mac Studio has the high end uh, two chips, right? So I think there is some discipline there that is good because it's absolutely true that this consumers. You know, they don't care. And, and even pros on one level kind of don't care. They just want to know, like, give me the right target to shoot at and and say, like, Max, like as a as a Mac uh, studio user, like 
M3 or 4 Max is going to be my next purchase, right? It's like Max is the sweet spot when I make an investment to do all my video encoding and stuff like that. It's just, so I think they've been pretty good at that for something that could be like, they, we don't talk about clock speeds and right. we don't really <laughs> even talk about the cores, right? I mean, they have very limited core variations on their site. They really keep it simple. Um, which is good because it gets real complex real fast. Otherwise. Yeah, pe people who read the German report might be surprised to find that, oh, wow, the G4, the next generation. And uh, the first, according to like his report, the first the first devices that will use the G, uh, excuse me, the M4s and the ones that will be coming out in late 2024. Are, wow, they, they're they putting it first in the desktop, in, in the iMac. They're putting it first in what's described as a low-end MacBook Pro, but it's the hottest new. Like, well, no, it's not really because like Jason says, it's not so much... The, the the M4, M3, M2, M1. That's base. That's the basic design of this piece of silicon, and how they package it is how they turn it into a pro, into a max, into into a, a budget affordable and unobtainium mm -hmm. uh, by putting so much of these cores on a single die to have them uh, communicate with each other in in, in uh, uh, flea whisker length uh, uh, lengths of copper that's how they actually get that performance not by saying well well th this m is one more isn't it like well yeah, but that's yes, how is. consumers are going to look at it i mean yeah. an m4 is one better than an m3 isn't it and, yeah. and, and, and intel intel is creating the exact same confusion we we all think of oh this i3 af i5 i7 i9 yes but which i3 which i5 yeah. which i7 Intel's really which muddied I the waters yeah. as has yeah. amd it's very hard to know what you're getting also we already uh, just did this right last fall we they announced the imac which was an m3 and they announced the macbook pro which was m3 M3 Pro and M3 Max. All right, let me and throw there's let a me throw a monkey wrench into this. Oh, you no. didn't mention the iPad. Okay. Is it going to be an M4 iPad? No, the the next generation of iPads is coming out and it'll be an M3 and there'll be an M4 iPad, it, you know. It will be for know, sure an M3, right? Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, there are, look, people run away with this. Mark Gurman's report's pretty clear. The M4 is coming at the end of the year. End of the That's year, it, not period. any sooner. Okay. No sooner. Okay. Um you know, because uh, up till now, the iPhones got the latest chip, but but there was, as you say, it was different sprinkles and no gummy bears. Yeah. Feels, so what, what Gurman's report, there's a detail in there that I think is interesting, which is he says Apple's goal has been to get Apple Silicon on uh, the M series, right, for the Mac on an annual cycle like the iPhone. Right. And it sounds like that. Which which saves a lot, right? Because it'll, yes. it means that they design a core and it's instantly like that generation ships with that core. Whereas before we were like, okay, every 18 months, is this on last fall's core or is it on next if, fall's core? If they or did what's that, going they could on? drop M3-4 and just call it 2024, 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like the A-series, right? They increment the A-series every year for the iPhone. So it sounds like this is their platonic ideal yeah. is every fall there's a new core generation and it includes the a whatever and the m whatever and and off we go and that seems to be what they're doing yeah so okay okay for, 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 for what it's worth i mean I, i've been talking about oh i'm sorry i'm finally gonna be able to upgrade my my mac mini uh to like apple silicon and i keep putting it off putting it off with every new every new uh, iteration and i'm not going to wait until the spring of 2025 to wait for uh to wait for an m4 based uh mac mini i'm going to get some flavor of uh, m3 max or m3 pro this year because it's not going to be that big of a difference between the m3 and the m4 now, maybe I misremembered this, but didn't German also say, though, that the new iPads will be the first generation of this, uh, is it the uh, 3N node, the new node? And isn't that, <laughs> I mean, I, I am really muddying the waters. Isn't well, that a little bit? The node isn't the chip design, right? <laughs> I know. I, I don't I know. remember that report, but the node isn't okay. the chip design. There's some speculation that they might be on the new node for the Ultra, that the M3 Ultra might actually be on a different right. process at TSMC, to, but now we're really down in the weeds, right? But that yeah. would be like, but it would still be using the M3 generation of cores. And so that, you know, the process is not the same as the chip generation. Well, and, and I think that, I think that for the, for the iPad, the, uh, that's the real place where I don't know if people will know or care. I mean, they're going to want something that's faster, but I, I have to say that for most applications I have, one iPad that's two years old and one iPad that's three years old. I didn't buy last year's iPad because I didn't think it was, what am I gonna do with it? Like what is new? And this is the biggest challenge that Apple has with the iPads. What is new that's enough new that I'm going to 
buy a new one because you know my kids just finally stopped using one that the very original iPad Pro, you know, like I mean, no, iPad Pro or iPad, no, the big, very original 12.9, and it was working perfectly well. I mean, Apple's yeah. almost overbuilt them for a long time. They're all overbuilt. Honestly. Well, and 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 the, and the issue is that the software, the the. The, they are getting better from iPad to iPad. The problem yeah. really is, is that there's not the enough. Software. You know, Apple, even Apple and others, aren't pushing the the right. hardware, the software hard enough to to actually use the hardware. You know, use the hardware, and that's the issue. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. If you enjoyed this little snippet of our programming, make sure you check out the full Mac Break Weekly. The link is right down there.